hello and welcome to let me bore you to sleep dot com my name is Jason Newland and this is my laptop <coughs> making some weird noise and uh Yeah, so this is Let Me Boy You To Sleep and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So I'm sitting here at my desk. It's really a table, but what is a desk? It's a flat surface, isn't it, really? I suppose anything can really be a desk. So this is my desk. So it's not anything, I mean, the wing of a plane is probably quite flat, that wouldn't make a very good desk, but you know, I'm just saying generally, some roofs are quite flat, again, that's not a good desk, but you know, I'm just saying technically, the wall's quite flat as well, but then that would mean I need to defy gravity I just haven't got the time to figure that one out unfortunately uh, I don't think Einstein it wasn't that he was particularly brainy he just had a lot of time on his hands <laughs> that's what I think he just didn't have a lot else to do but think about stuff like gravity and atoms and you know time travel or whatever else he used to and some people focus on making muffins he focused on uh, making uh, atomic bombs well he didn't focus on that but you know thanks to him we have nuclear missiles but yeah he's a what a legend so let's have a look. What I was thinking of doing today is having a little bit of a a thank you session. So just to say thank you to a few people. Although I've kind of already done it on Facebook and Twitter uh, I thought I'd kind of do it verbally as well had a bit of a cough the last few days um, which has kind of put me off making recordings although I can edit it out and I can also press the pause button as well whilst I'm recording which is what I just did just then thought I didn't need to tell you that but so yeah I'm just gonna gonna sort of say thank you to some people and it will be boring <laughs> to those that I'm not saying thank you to especially you know I used to have, I had this friend at college or university and a group of us used to meet up like a group of like you know fellow students and this one one person she'd actually come in met up in the pub she'd come in and she'd give a present to one of the other people in the group in front of everybody else but no presents for anybody else and it wasn't their birthday or anything like that it was just I mean the other person's not there it might have been their birthday but they didn't mention it but I was like wait a minute there's something unusual about that. I felt 
felt unusual to give somebody a present in front of others while there's four or five other people there and you just give the present to just one person. Maybe it was their birthday. Maybe. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's the other way around. Uh, only one person didn't give a present to that person. And it was me. No. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I don't really like giving things to people. So. I saw my niece the other day. It was. My family came up. Well. Uh, the people I'm related to came up. Some of them. Uh, not all of them. Came and. Uh, to my town. To go to the zoo. And. Uh, some of them decided to come and see me as they were in the town and I so we just had a cup of tea or, or whatever it was they had um, I, had, I had a bottle of coke so I didn't take much notice of what anyone else had to drink because it didn't affect my life um, but I gave my niece ten pound so I gave my dad a bottle of whiskey for his birthday that I missed in you know, a few months back. So I didn't get to see him. And then I gave my niece a £10 note. And she took it and put it in a, in a not a pram, not a wallet, what was it? A purse or I don't know, whatever she had, where she collects money. And I said, oh, uh, what did I say? Oh, I said, sorry, I didn't, I didn't buy you a card because you can't buy stuff with cards, can you? You know, like a birthday card. And I was told, well, yeah, you did buy her a card. And apparently I sent it a couple of months ago. Don't recall doing that. So I must have done it on Moonpig or one of the internet card sellers I don't even remember doing it no wonder I've got no money if I'm wasting my I'm wasting it sending cards to people but anyway I had no intention of giving her a card and apparently I already had so if I'd known that I didn't have to give her any money but anyway it's too late then can't ask for it back and uh, and then I started asking her questions I just thought, you know, how you doing? What are you up to? Yeah, yeah. I said, well, I don't want to, what, don't even talk to me? She said, I'm shy. So, okay. And then uh, her grandparents were saying, yeah, she's shy. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask my money back. Because... The least you can do for ten pound is talk to me for a minute. You know, <laughs> is that too much to ask? Just to look in my general direction. But yeah, she's wasn't didn't want to talk. And you might say, yeah, but she's only two years old, Jason. Um, she's not actually. She's eleven. So. I suppose it must be weird though for 11 year olds like kids to have a conversation with an adult because it's it's a very different like an adult they don't really know I suppose it's because she doesn't know me she's seen me once a year maybe if that so she, I'm kind of just a, a stranger really to her I'm this bloke that she's seen a few times So I suppose, yeah, I shouldn't really take it personally. It's not so much I want no money back. I just, I'd like to have the £10 back and then give her less. 
is, you know, maybe four pound. I think the conversation was probably worth about two pound twenty that I had, and yeah, this didn't really. Yeah, I probably had more. Felt more connected to the waitress or the waiter that was serving sandwiches. But anyway, it's, that's the thing. So my little advice is, if you've got a nephew or niece, they need to see you more regularly than once a year. Otherwise, you're just a stranger to them. You know, when she was little, I mean little, and she's still little, but when she was little and she couldn't talk or anything, I thought, well... I'll wait till she can talk, then we'll be able to get on, because I'm a verbal person. And, you know, it's, there's not really much to do with them, is there, when they're little, when they're kids, just babies, they just lay there and look cute, but that's, you know, and then, they don't always feel jealous that, they can just sit there at the dinner table and they don't have to go to the toilet. You know, they can just do everything where they're sitting and it just doesn't seem fair. Never have to wash their hands, do they, babies? Never have to say sorry. Don't have to go out to work. Don't have to go shopping. Yeah, but uh, I thought it'd be good, you know, when she got older, I thought maybe she gets to, I leave it, I thought I'd leave it 10 years. I thought, I'll, you know, I'll just let her get older and then when she's able to verbalise, I can never really realise, remember what age the kids can talk. I don't know if what year it is. I think it's, I kind of figure out 10, but apparently it's a bit younger than that. And uh, so I just, I thought I'd leave it and then when she was older we could get on really well because I have a laugh, you know. But no, nah, she's, she's shy. Which was just, oh. So I'm guessing that's been taught. She's learned that. And it's, no, it's, just, it's more of a shame for me really because I was looking forward to like having a laugh with her because kids are really funny but she's uh, maybe it was just a case of stranger danger which I didn't really expect but you know just maybe it's because I got a beard maybe it's because I'm ageing and every time she sees me I perhaps look a little bit older and she doesn't remember doesn't know who I am. It's like, you look similar to that bloke that I saw last year, but you've got more grey hairs now. Why have you got a beard now? I'm sure your belly wasn't that big last time. So yeah, it's uh, another thing. Over the years, I've bought her presents. I bought her some quite nice little presents, actually. But they get sent, I send them to my dad's house so that he can give them to her, because I don't get that up there to see her. And they just get left there. So she never she never took any of my presents actually home to her own house, where she lives. So, I suppose I'm just a, like a little gift shop. And you know, things have you got, stuff like toys that you play with at your grandparents' house, there's less attachment to them than you would have if you had them in your bedroom and they were there and you see them every day. And, yeah. and I started off saying I was going to say thank you, but I'm just turned up and <laughs> just moaning. I'm not moaning. I'm just just chatting. You know what I mean? So the point of this is for me <laughs> to be boring, and I genuinely do do that. I think I. I tick the boring box every single time 
and whether I'm talking about ice cream or uh, not getting value for money or whatever it is, you know. I'm not saying that when you give a gift to someone that you should receive something back in return because it's a gift, isn't it? But just a, I don't know, a smile maybe? Just a acknowledgement of your existence? Just just general little thing. Maybe I'm fussy. Maybe I'm fussy. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Could be exaggerate. I do like to exaggerate, especially in these recordings. I exaggerate. I don't even have a niece. So there you go. So what I wanted to do, my lovely followers and fans, the people out there listening that just love me so much, I just can't get enough of my silky, pointless voice. So let me bore you to sleep dot com is the website for this podcast. Now I have been working on it for the last well for a while, but um I've been working especially on that podcast for the last week or so trying to make it a bit more homey somewhere that maybe is quite nice to visit so I was going to say it's the equivalent of me having a bath but it's not is it that would mean that would be meaningless but just see when I have a bath I feel a bit more comfortable it's a bit nicer, a bit, my home feels, well, it's less smelly, so, you know, it's kind of, it's a bit more comfortable, you know, some people actually say comfortable like that, comfortable, it's just like some parts, some places, they called films, film, film. I'm not going to go into the old uh, the difference the way English and Americans pronounce specific words like aluminium aluminum it's uh, what did someone say to me the other day and they pronounced it but in an American way which I say in an American way it might be Canadian Canadian as well and uh, it might other parts of the world also might pronounce uh, those words wrongly and I think what other words are the root so you know route that's, that's technically it is how it's spelled route um, root you could say is R-O-O-T but there's a lot of words that are spelt that sound the same but are spelt differently and they mean different things which I think is a bit silly it's very miscommunication-y re, I do believe it's, um, it's a very famous case in England uh, I won't go into sort of details or why it's famous but there is these two it was like a it was in the 60s 1960s so I don't think it's too soon to mention it and there was a Bobby that's a policeman in them days they were called Bobbies and they used to have little whistles and stuff little truncheons and uh, was it Robin Williams said isn't it the difference between Americans and a, a English police is it, you know, in America you've got guns, in England we've got no guns, so the police shout out, stop, or I'll say stop again. So that's, uh, that's, that is the great Robin Williams, said that in one of his stand-up uh, shows. 
stop or I'll say stop again um, I can get getting these messages from YouTube um, so people are listening to me and they're leaving comments about the what I've said during the recordings and I don't remember anything that I've said ever because once I said it, it's gone and you may just, you know someone might comment you shouldn't want gifts you you should visit your niche more often me 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 and I'll be thinking but I don't have a niece what what we talked about so yeah that's another thing because I lie and make up stuff and exaggerate and you know it's it's a mixture between truth and lies it's very much like life and so yeah it's kind of I don't always remember what I've said um, because what I say is kind of meaningless to me it's just a bunch of words in order to bore you to sleep um, so yeah I get these messages come through anyway the let me bore you to sleep podcast uh, website let me bore you to sleep dot com is I started putting on uh, links so you can go to different podcast hosts to host it because I figure out everybody's got their own place that they like to go to listen to stuff some people and I noticed this uh, over time and people have said to me said why have you done that uh, you know when I took videos off YouTube and and they said I only like to listen on YouTube I don't want to listen to a podcast and then that's what I hear but I'm sure they say in other words as well and so with the podcasts you know it's it's you know it's obviously we can't I can't please everybody and I kind of think it you know in this way is I've never pleased a woman in my life in any relationship so why should I expect to please people from a, in a distance in other countries via the internet I can't you know I mean not everyone's gonna be a hundred percent pleased with every single atomic <laughs> atomic every atom of what I do but that's okay because for me this is about it's more to what I do than what it seems that I'm doing but that's okay because I've got this little agenda um, but you shouldn't I shouldn't really tell you what it is it's not a bad thing it's, it's a really it's a really healthy thing um, but I'm a little bit vague with it in some ways in other ways I'm really obvious with it in some of the other podcasts and part of what I do is with these recordings is I figure if you listen regularly maybe every day over a period of time that's a, that's a very vague sentence isn't it a period of time what do you mean like 7 minutes or 45 years 45 years of course I expect you to be listening to this way past my extinction I want you to be listening to this into old age and <laughs> I don't really well it's up to you but there are benefits to be had that are not so obvious there's a f I think we kind of as human beings we're very 
very um, very tight there's a very tightness in the mind everything seems to be seems like thoughts, beliefs prejudices uh, limited thinking, you know, that kind of that good stuff it seems to be stuck but it's not stuck with super glue it feels like it is maybe um, if when you actually examine it you know that idea of this is what I believe and nothing's going to change that mm, 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 mm. because they're, they're starting up a little moped mm, 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 mm. that's my impression of a well pretty much any kind of vehicle apart from a milk float you know I used to believe that you didn't have to have a driving license to drive a milk float and if those that don't know what a milk float is um, I pity you <laughs> uh, it's it's what milk milk people they used to be called milkmen in the old days um, just like a lot of job titles used to have the word man attached to it postman, gas man uh, what other ones used to ha have man electrician man um, postman no, I've done that already delivery man um, I'm trying to think I can't I'm really intrigued now. And it'd be so easy to go online to Google, you know, because it's right in front of me. Not Google, but the, you know, the uh, internet access point, which is the web, the laptop. But it's not that important. So, like gas man, postman, milkman, yardsman. Um, what other factory worker man no so that's 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 not that was a very non sex isn't it sexist I remember years ago I was being a bit rude to someone well it's just not being rude to them but in front of them and this person said you're sexist and I said, oh, you're not bad yourself. I was very pleased with myself at the time. Um, I said something the other day that I was quite pleased with. What was it? I can tell you what it was, if I can remember it. It was mildly profound. And I remember at the time saying it and then saying, well, I'm pleased with that. I don't have to remember that. I'm going to use that again. I think it might have um, spoiled the moment, though. But that's okay. Uh, well, it was something. Oh, it will come to me. If it comes to me during this recording, I will let you know. But if it doesn't, then uh, what I'll do is afterwards, I'll just phone in each individual person and let you know by phone, you know. So, what I'm going to do is what I was planning to do originally is say thank you to people, but... On the website, the let me bore you to sleep dot com. If you go there, it's not because I particularly want you to go to the website. Because why would I want that after spending all that time working on it? Why would I want visitors? Oh, I've actually put a gallery of Andre, a gallery of Andre's pictures. So. I've got quite a few pictures of him, but I put probably the best, best ones. 
because not all of the ones are like clear um, and some of them are kind of very samey because a lot of his pictures are just him being asleep because that's when he looks cutest and also when he's awake he moves around you know he's, he's a wiggler or a wriggler wiggler wiggler he moves around a lot basically you know he's a bit hyperactive which I think he, he wears himself out and then he goes to sleep so it's pretty much like a like a toddler like a child you know runs around in circles you know like a child just had some uh, I don't know a half a glass of coca cola or something it's like runs around in circles and then just falls down and and then they're asleep imagine if that worked you wouldn't need me this would be no point me doing this it'd just be a, a one episode podcast wouldn't it well now all you need to do is just have get get yourself a glass that's a good boy and get yourself a nice yeah can of coke or bottle doesn't matter but of course cans taste a lot better than they do out of the bottle well out of the plastic bottles anyway it's you know the glass bottles are different but the plastic bottles don't taste the same what do you mean they don't taste the same so it's not valid that's not what we're talking about we're talking about you know you getting some sleep yeah but you keep talking about plastic bottles no, just, just stop it's not that important but what's the difference from that it's all the same you know things aren't all the same I had a friend like that he said uh, we he, we lived in London and I think he was born without any taste buds because he'd order pizza from the kebab shop okay now kebabs the best place to go to get a kebab is a kebab shop you know you know I'll, I'll put my hands up to that there's no point putting your hands up but I'm gonna you won't even know if I'm even doing it but I am I'm waving my hands around the place best place to go to a kebab shop is a kebab no, no to a get a kebab is a kebab shop and um, however and I'm not I am generalizing but I, actually I'm not going to generalize I'm just going to be specific to this um, actual kebab shop where my friend would get a pizza it wasn't top class um, you know I like kebabs and I like pizzas although I hadn't had a kebab probably for about 10 years but you know I used to like kebabs and pizzas I don't want my kebab to taste like a pizza see where I'm going with this and I don't want my pizza to taste like a kebab so it was soggy you know if if I want to eat something that tastes disgusting which is inedible and I actually feel ill looking at it then I will just cook for myself you know the whole point of paying somebody else that's the thing that's what I mean about you pay someone you get something for it you know if I give ten pounds uh, to a fast food place I get food to eat and I you know get it to take home and they say thank you and they look at me and you know um, but yeah I should let that go so yeah there was the whole and he, yeah, I'd say to him let's get the pizza from Domino's or from the Pizza Hut or at that time there was 
a pizza place that was it was kind of like uh, a dominoes for people on unemployment benefit it was like a really kind of a lower class not lower class that sounds that sounds very judgmental doesn't it but I was on benefits so I'm just judging myself really but it's, it was a lower a lower level pizza place and but it was cheaper and I used to like their pizzas actually because there was one opposite where I lived and when I see that something's half the price because where I lived there was actually a Domino's pizza and a Pizza Go-Go that's the name of the place Pizza Go-Go don't know if it still exists for the sake of this story the health of the business doesn't really come into it I mean I wish them well and everything but whether they're the business closed or it's still thriving and they're now sitting on a yacht drinking coke out of a plastic bottle it makes no difference to the story it's it's, a, it's not really a story but it's a it's an anecdote isn't it is it an anecdote is that the right word it's a a telling of something that's, that's incredibly important that's it anyway and I said to my friend because we were sitting down, I was. It was a sat. It was a Sunday afternoon. Because I used to, cause he, he used, yeah, he used to work nights, and I wasn't working at the time. So I used to visit him on Sundays. That's pretty much the time I'd see him. So I'd, I'd visit him on a Sunday afternoon, and we'd just hang out for a few hours, maybe to the evening. Sometimes I'd be there all night until the next Monday Monday morning um, and you know the thing is because he'd go to bed and I knew where he hid all the naughty videos but uh, he, I'm joking I'm joking he didn't bother hiding them plus they they weren't his so, what was that a rucksack full of? Uh... No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, right, that's got me thinking about kebabs, kebabs, pizza. That's a. Um, so he said, "Oh, let's get a pizza." I said, "Good. It's a good idea." And he said, "Well, I'll go and get them." I thought, "Ooh." So I'm sitting in a chair. Because we used to live together, not um, together, together as in husband and husband, but I lived, I had a room and he had a room, um, and we'd just meet in the hallway and have a little kiss sometimes, but other than that, we'd uh, share baths together, you know, just normal stuff that friends do, and uh you know, I'd I'd say breakfast in bed, and he'd say, and I'd hold a tray, and he said, "There's nothing on the tray." I said, "He said to us, there's nothing to eat. There's nothing on the tray. What, what, what kind of tree is that?" And I'd say, "I'm the tree," and I'd jump into bed, and he'd say, "You know, he'd say, can you get out of bed, please? You're, you're disturbing my girlfriend. Just trying to sleep." I was like, "Oh, okay." We need to talk about this, this kind of weird behaviour. I think you need to move out. So, okay. So, yeah. So, I moved out in the end. But I still visited because I can't take a hint. So, I was sitting there in a chair and he was sitting on the settee. And that chair even though I left it in the flat when I moved out it was my chair because I like to sit in a chair on my own I don't I don't like settees or uh, sofas 
when there's someone else sitting on it. Even if the even if the sofa's a hundred foot long and the person sitting on the other end, on the edge. No, I like to have my own my own space. <laughs> Seriously, I do. You know, I'd like to have an old, a whole island to myself if I could. I know half of it would have been taken up by my belly, but the rest of it I could use for skip it around. Andre would love it. He would. I like somewhere that Andre could just run around and just, you know, do his own thing and just have like a whole garden, a big garden where he could run around and. You know, I'd get it all set up so that he couldn't escape, because he would want to escape. Even I could literally give him something the size of seventeen football pitches, and he'd still want to get out. And if there was a door, oh man! Seriously, if this is a closed door, can't stand it. Absolutely can't stand it. He's just all. Cannot. You know how some drivers are like when they see somebody on a push bike. It's like, oh, I can't handle that. They're on a push bike. Oh, how dare they? Why can't they have a car like me? So yeah, it's uh. Bought some ice cream the other day. That was all right. See, I don't live on ice cream. I just want to put that there I'm not always eating ice cream but I thought it'd be better to instead of buying chocolate I'd buy ice cream because now it's the summer and it has got quite hot the last few days then ice cream's quite a nice thing to have so instead of just eating for the sake of eating and eating chocolate just because it's there I wouldn't eat ice cream probably in the evening. And I've never told a bigger lie. I was eating ice cream, I've had, yeah, earlier, a little while ago, but generally I'm saying it's, it's nice to have when it's hot. So there's pictures of Andre on the website. Uh, yeah, and I, so I said that my friend went off, I gave him. I think we go in half, so I, he paid, I think he, the, the pizzas were 20 pound or something, so I gave him three pound towards them. And he went off and he came back with two pizza boxes, with pizzas in them, and he handed it to me. And I said, what was this? He says it's your pizza. Uh, I could. I was like, I just couldn't. I just couldn't look at him. I was just like, what? He said, why? Are you, he said, why are you not looking at me? I'm just giving you a gift. You should. You should at least acknowledge that I've given you a gift. I said, look, I paid two pound twenty towards this. He said, yeah, but I've just paid £23. I said, you paid £23 for two pizzas. This is 20 years ago. So the, the ex, you know, it didn't cost that much 22 years ago. And he said, who are you talking to? I said, what do you mean? He said, you said it didn't cost that much 22 years ago. We're here now. 22 years ago it would have been the 70s. I said, just, I'm telling a story. He said, what? Who are you telling a story to? I said, look, I'm making a recording. Just go along with it. Oh, all right then. And I said, yeah, anyway, you've got this pizza. Where did you get it from? He said, I got it from, like you said, I got it from the pizza hut. Like you said. I said, if you got it from the Pizza Hut, what does it says? What does it say? 
salmonella kebabs on the side I said what do you mean I said look it says salmonella kebabs on the side they've even got a logo they've got a special offer if it kills you you get a refund well, that's alright it's a pizza isn't it yeah okay it's a pizza it looks like a pizza not sure about the smell coming out of it you didn't I mean to be fair when you first walked in here I thought you'd been to the joke shop and you brought back a couple of boxes of farts and he said you're just so childish I said I know and he said well you can't come back from that if you agree with people agree with them whatever they say no 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 just agree yeah that's true yeah you're right I do have mechanical teeth they don't know what to do with that then yes I am a hundred foot long of course you have to have people telling you that you're 100 foot long or you've got mechanical teeth for that to work so I said it says salmonella pizza no kebab he said ah oh, he said pizza then he messed up your story I said no it doesn't matter hopefully everyone's asleep by now that's kind of the point he said yeah I know but talk so much rubbish during these things sometimes that don't you think that might be a little bit distracting to sleep because you're kind of like what on earth's going on I know yeah I suppose sometimes but it's it's not really exciting stuff is it and he said yeah I can I can back that one I said anyway you got these from the kebab shop, didn't you? You didn't get it from the Pizza Hut. And he said, I'll, I'll never forget this. Never. You know, some people say, I wouldn't forget that in a million years. How would you know? I've forgotten stuff that happened in the past. You know, I can't remember everything that's happened ever. That's why I lie so much, because I just have to make stuff up. Otherwise, if I depended on my memory for everything that I talked about, I don't know if I could do a whole 20 minutes, never mind an hour. And he said, who are you talking to? I said, I'm still doing a recording. And, oh, okay, can we get back to the pizza? Oh, oh you want to talk about the pizza, do you? He said yes. And he said this thing that I couldn't believe. I said, you didn't go to the Pizza Hut, did you? He said, no. But. What's the difference? They all taste the same. They all taste the same. It's exactly the same as a pizza hut, he said. And then he put the pizza, his one, on the floor and started dancing around and saying, taste the same, taste the same. They all, all, all taste the same. At that point, I thought I should leave it because there's something not quite right going on here. but I couldn't leave it I just look they don't taste the same and he couldn't get his head around the idea that a place that makes pizzas and only pizzas okay I know they're a little bit more adventurous and they do side but I know they call it sides now don't we in England never used to call it sides it used to be uh additional food I think they used to call it would you like any additional food now it's would you like any sides 
I said, that's all right, I've got a front and a back, and I've I've always wanted some sides, you know, it saves me having to like have a little belt to keep all my internal organs in. If I had sides, then that would be really good. That would be lovely, thanks. Sides. And uh, so now there's more choice, you know, you think it's like, I can't bother to give the menu out to you, but you know, it's different bits you can get. I'm not sure if they were available back then. It's not that long ago, but it is. I said it's like, you know, 1997, I think I'm thinking about. See, it's 22 years. So, I said it doesn't taste the same. It's not the same. Not all places are the same. Not all pizzas are the same. And he said, yeah, it's just the same. I think his theory, his he was basing it on the spelling. Well, it's spelt the same, therefore it must taste the same. I think that was his uh, logical thinking. Well, logical to him. It spelt the thing. And... Actually, it's not a bad pizza, to be fair. It tasted quite all right. But that's not the point. And I couldn't tell him that it tasted nice because then that would have undone all my good work during the, the, the discussion. But not everything tastes the same. It's like saying... Uh, McDonald's burgers and Burger King burgers taste the same they don't and McDonald's burgers are tasteless without the mustard and the little bits they put onto it on the griddle and Burger King they just heat their burgers up so you know they might. I think they microwave their burgers they might not of course you know, that's just what someone told me once. Probably not true. Yeah, I can't get sued for that. I've seen, I've been in Burger King when I was younger. I've seen them put stuff into microwaves. Because you get the, the bun's not supposed to be warm and soggy. I don't think. On a burger. Although I don't go, I don't eat burgers really. Apart from yesterday. Not, not, I didn't actually, I had one of, I, made my own I didn't make my own I didn't didn't buy a cow but you know I had you know had some frozen um, cow parts that I uh, put in the oven and the first time there I made the first that was a weird, weird noise wasn't it was it the first time the first time I made a burger was when I was at school and I was doing home economics that was the name of the class basically cooking really and uh, and basically burgers are just meatballs it's just meat minced meat with vegetables not vegetables like onions and some people put other stuff in them as well Maybe a little bit of egg to keep the stuff together, but um, I might have made that bit up. Um, but it's just uh, perhaps a little bit of flour. They're just their meatballs flattened. That's all they are. Burgers are just meatballs flattened and then griddled or grilled or fried or deep fat fried or fried in a frying pan or barbecued or I don't know held over a volcano I'm sure there's lots of different ways of cooking never been near a volcano they're very beautiful aren't they to watch 
probably not when you live near one it's nice to watch it it's like it's a little bit like watching you know in the old days of like computers and stuff and it'd be a screen saver and there'd be like an image moving around maybe it'd be a word or a sentence well, I remember I'd have things like like when I was at work I'd have a like a little sentence, sentence saying go away and things like that so that when I was away from my desk someone would look at it and it just you know I always knew when someone has looked at my screen because they'd be rolling around on the floor laughing and he said go away he wrote it on his computer instead of something else and uh sometimes you get pictures wouldn't you and moving images or maybe like a a goldfish bowl or a tank of erotic no not erotic exotic or well, sometimes are erotic fish they're basically the same as the exotic fish but they were holding little whips and um I mean latex don't knock it honestly a goldfish wearing latex boots well it's a latex fin cover really but it's quite nice to look at and I quite like to have something like a volcano because one, you know, it's quite nice to watch. You know, the lava spurting out, and sort of very beautiful. The colours, and... but of course, I guess it's not really that great if you if you got a house, if you built a house on the volcano. Because I would worry, really, if someone's... How is someone going to figure out how to escape from the volcano? If they're dumb enough to build a house on the volcano, how are they going to be? Like, oh, I don't know what to do. Well, yeah. Wow, volcano. You live near an active volcano and it's erupted. Who'd have thought that would happen? But I built my house of sand on the beach. Where's it going? And the tides come in. Yeah, I think there was a there was a parable in one of the religions about that. Building sand houses on a beach. It wasn't a sand castle. Because you couldn't build a whole castle on a beach, you know, while the tide's out. Because it would take too long, wouldn't it? You'd never get it finished before the tide came in. You'd, you'd need thousands of people working, you know, really quickly to be able to build, not even like, not a whole castle size, but even a castle-shaped house, you know, the size of a house. Even if you had, the thing is, you might have 5,000 people, but they'd always be banging into each other, wouldn't they? So it probably wouldn't work. I mean, just, you probably have to keep rebuilding a wall because it'll be banging into the wall and just the heat from them would probably, actually there's no end to that sentence because it wouldn't make sense, but. Yeah, but I took it off my screensaver because I was enjoying it too much and that might seem like a strange thing I mean it wasn't like a news footage some kind of volcanic disaster and it wasn't anything weird like that but it was just a, a beautiful volcano erupting and it was like a 
something that you get on a national, like National Geographic uh, documentary or something like that. And uh, because I was at work, there's certain things on National Geographic that I couldn't put onto my screensaver, which I would have preferred, but you know, but I didn't anyway. And but what happened is I took it off in the end because I thought this is a slippery slope. So I got this volcano there, and I'm enjoying that. What's next? Typhoons, tsunamis. Am I gonna? You know, it's like, I was like, no, I, I need to just. Yeah, that's just, you know. Tornadoes, hurricanes. It's like, no, let's let's just leave it. Leave that. Let let get rid of that. So I uh, put some kittens on there instead. No, actually, I don't mean the screensaver. I actually put a live cat. On my computer, I um, yeah, I tied it, tied it to a, a little hook, put into the top of the desk, and I just like put a little bit of rope around it, and <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I don't know why I'm saying this. I really didn't. I I've never owned a cat. But we used to have a cat when I was a kid called. Oh, I don't care. I, I, I think my dad's. I think it was called Don't Get Too Attached to It because of getting rid of it at the weekend. That's, uh, that's what my dad used to. And that's what my dad said when we first got it. So I said to him, what's, what's, what's her name? Don't get too attached, I'm getting rid of it at the weekend. I thought that's a long name, and uh, yeah, it didn't last long, unfortunately. But I've lived in the houses with cats, and I've only ever really had a close relationship with one cat. And this was in nineteen ninety seven. Again, that's a that was a good year. pizza from a kebab shop and a cat that liked me and this cat I was going through a little bit of a weird time and I moved into this place and this ginger cat really liked me I don't know why I've never had any kind of closeness with a cat before but this cat used to come into my bedroom and I'd lay on my stomach and it would walk up and down my back and it was so relaxing. I could just feel my whole body just relaxing. And it just really liked me. Just for some reason really took to me. Um, it's the only cat I really kind of bonded with. And uh, I've had dogs. I've lived in places with dogs. But I've never really. I think the only. The only animal that I've ever really felt close to is Andre. The only kind of. But then he's my son, I don't class him as an animal. Apart from when I see what he does on the carpet, then I definitely is an animal. And what I see is when I see what he does to my slippers. That's, that's animalistic behaviour. But. Oh, it's, it's weird, I and mean, that might sound strange, but it's such a strong bond with him. It's really got a really close relationship with him. Probably more on my side than his. I, just, I talk to him about everything. And he looks at me. He's got that expression, it's like, okay. But, uh,. Weren't you about to go into the kitchen and get me some food? So, okay, Andre, okay. You know, that's his answer to everything. It's usually that, or. So, you're going to take me out for a walk then? You know, 
things. He's very self-centered. Nothing like me. I'm always I'm all about others. <laughs> and I didn't get around to saying thank you to anyone. So I'll say thank you to everybody. Because I've had a lot, quite a few nice comments, well, lovely comments this week. I've had some donations to help me towards uh, paying the monthly bills that I have to pay for to keep this free service going and that is mounting up it's actually gone up an extra 30 pound a month because i've started promoting the let me boy to sleep facebook page so that's costing me 30 pound this month over the next month and then i'm going to be doing that for the next year so that's an extra 30 pound a month but the, fit, the part of the reason for that is because if I promote the page, the only people that are going to like the page are people that are interested in what I'm doing. Rather than, you know, I could pay and buy likes of the page. You know, if I, if I had the money, if I had the money, I could get millions of likes. But if I had, for £50 or £100, I could get... 10, 20,000 likes on that page. But there'd be people from uh, all over the world that were got no interest in what I'm doing. They just like it because they're perhaps getting paid to do it. And that's not what I, what I want. So I want proper, organic, uh, legitimate, genuine people that like what I do. So I can build these let me boys to sleep uh, podcast and what I do here because uh, it's got a life of its own separate from the other hypnosis stuff that I do that's why I got its you know it's got its own website it's got its own Facebook page and um, yeah so I'm quite it's it's quite nice to sort of see how that goes this is why I'm putting more effort into that particular website at the moment but I do get caught up in the websites I get caught up in the building of them because I mean I'll be honest that I kind of I kind of got a one track mind sometimes and when I start doing something I lose interest maybe in other things and to the to be honest the most important thing is making new recordings on on one level but on the same level I've made over a thousand and I think this is 159 of the let me boy to sleep I've done so promoting it would be better because then more will reach more people and hopefully help more people to be bored to sleep so it's kind of it's a fine balance but I'd sometimes I get caught up in what I'm doing and I want to do more and just focus on that and I want to keep going and uh, I'm in the process at the moment not what I'm talking to you but I don't know why I sat at my laptop I could have done this sitting down in a chair and I'm now in a process for every episode of the podcast on letmeboyyoutosleep.com I have so you've got the title you've got the the player the, you know so you can listen to it stream it but there's also underneath there's a title listen on podcast players and there's a list of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen eighteen different podcast players or podcast hosts that you can listen to this podcast on so just um 
to every episode, I'm going to have a link underneath which you can click on, let's say Podtail or uh, Podcast Apple or um, Radio Online, Pod Paradise, Play.acast, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podchaser, Castbox, Spreaker, Podbean, Player FM, Open.spotify.com, Himalaya.com, MyTuner, Radio.com, Overcast.fm, Cloudcaster.com, Player.beyondpod.mobi. Um, so let's say, for example, you use Castbox and that's your favourite place to listen and you can't be bothered to go to the website or you don't want to. <laughs> I'm not being judgmental, you can't be bothered, but you know, Castbox might be the place you want to go to, or Stitcher, or TuneIn, or Spotify, or Spreaker, wherever it is, Pod Paradise, Podtail, Apple, I, you know, iTunes. So it then takes you to that, and you can listen to it there if you want to. Or you can go to it and then you can subscribe and then you never have to come back to the website. But I would say come back to the website because I've worked so hard on it. I need people to visit. It's very important to me. Very, very important. And also, if you fancy it, you can uh, leave a comment on every recording below at the bottom as well of the page there's a a comment section you can leave a comment and uh, there's also a testimonial box which you can you can click on leave testimonial or write testimonial yeah write testimonial and then it you can write something down and send it and then that will come up on the the page because on the actual website let's have a look on the website there is it's going to look different on your phone but should look the same on the on a like a tablet or something there's on the right hand side on, on the top of it it's got the logo, like the Let Me Boy to Sleep um, picture. It's a picture of Andre. And uh, there's also the in the menu, there's Home, Posts, Archives, My Podcasts, Podcast Players. So My Podcast is a list of all the different podcasts that I've got. My Podcast Players, no, Podcast Players is... Um, a list of all the different podcasts players that have my podcast on it this particular podcast uh, there's a donate box a donate link which takes you to uh, what is it called paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland if you want to sort of port what I do uh, there's a testimonials which gives you Click on that and it lets you see testimonials people have left. Another, the next menu thing is write testimonial. Click on that and it lets you write something. And, um, and then that will get posted. There's a Facebook, Twitter, links. And then there's the Facebook page is the Let Me Boy to Sleep page. Uh, Pics of Andre, that's, that's the last thing. And there's one, two, three, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. Yeah, it's a few pictures. It's quite a few actually. They're all lovely. It's really good pictures. It's a really good, quite nice, lovely quality website with the pictures. They're just It's so beautiful. He's such a beautiful little boy. And uh, so I'll add pictures to that as I go along. 
but uh, yeah so that's pictures of him I thought that would be nice for those of you to hear me talking about him and wonder what I'm talking about so uh, yeah so that's good so that's on there so on the right hand side of the page if you're watching on a if you're looking at it on a tablet or a laptop there's a testimonials and it's it, it it's like a box and it just has testimonials that people have written and uh, so there's a few there's about six or seven at the moment uh, and then underneath that you've got right testimonial so you can write your own so yours will come up on there when you've done it and then below that there's a, a donate box paypal facebook page logo and then underneath that there's the archives so from february 2018 all the way up to, to may 2019 so this will be june will it because it's the first one of june i've done and then there's recent posts there's one, two, three, four, five. So the last one I did was the 30th of May. And that was 100, number 158. And that is everything. Oh, the very last picture on uh, Andre's pictures, or pics of Andre, is him actually standing up on his legs, on his uh, on his back legs with his hands down looking up and he's on my little table that's next to my big black squeaky chair what you can't see is my friend's hand above I don't know if he's holding something but it's probably just his hand because Andre likes to bite him they play very rough them two together but Andre's known him since he was since Andre's been I was say since he's a baby but um, since Andre was a baby rather and he absolutely loves playing with him. He loves biting him. And really, the two people that Andre's known in his life is me and my friend, because he had, he also had a ferret as well, which was Andre's, um, what auntie or uh, no, a, no, uncle. Yeah, I think that is this or. Maybe even his dad, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But, uh, yeah, it's very cute. It's the only one I've got of him actually standing up. And his hands, his hands are just down. But it's a really good picture. Some of them are really clear. And most of the ones I put on there are clear. But there's just, it's mainly there's one with his tongue sticking out where he's asleep. So cute. And there's a there's a few where he's in his hammock, and he's just looking, so relaxed. There's another one, yeah, it's really cool. There's uh, a few others where he's asleep. There's one where he's actually, and this is a this is a real picture. It was not set up because I can't get him to pose. He won't pose. He's too wiggly to do that he just you know I, I actually caught him I found him in my bed and his head was laying on the pillows it's actually more than his head it's like the top half of his body is laying in the pillows on the pillows but the rest of his body is underneath the quilt so I took a picture of that so it looks like he's actually well he is he's sleeping in my bed like a human would so that's a really cute picture I'm glad I got that um, and there's a picture the first picture of him is him when he was a baby it's shortly after I first got him and he's tiny very tiny he's so beautiful because you can see that his eyes are bigger because he's on his head his eyes are much wider God, his head's grown but his eyes probably stay the same size it's the most beautiful most beautiful little thing in the world but I am biased oh. 
I keep looking at the pictures, it's really weird. And there's a few of them eating as well. There's one him eating an egg. And there's one of him eating gla wearing glasses. And there's one of him eating his dinner. He's actually eating it. He's halfway under the quilt. And the, the there's a little plate of food that he's eating out of. So he's just... He's got half his body reaching out to eat the food. Because he was asleep. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll just take the food to him. A little bit of breakfast in bed. And he said to me, You can go now. And I said, well, can't, can't I get into bed with you? And he said, no. I like you as a friend. So, yeah. Anyway, I want to go have a lovely, 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 lovely sleep. Hopefully, you've been a nice, sleepy, boring thingy. I've run out of words now. Anyway, I'll speak to you next time. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.